Hello and welcome to another Love Rugby League Weekly. My name's Dave Parkinson, delighted to be alongside uh, Drew Derbyshire. Uh, no James, I've got dressed up specially for the occasion to lose shirt. There's a couple of reasons for wearing this, by the way. I know, it's, it, to be fair, it c can only be a blessing in disguise that James is here today. It's a bit, bit quieter. Probably, probably. We might be able to get a word in edgeways. Well, we might, we might be able to. I won't be shouting this week, Dave. <laughs> yeah. um, so great to have you alongside me again. There is a second reason for wearing this shirt, of course, as well as uh, you know the, our French cousins doing particularly well. It's that I can fit in it again. <laughs> I originally bought this shirt back in about 2011 when I went over to Toulouse for the first time and I couldn't get anywhere near it. Uh, so so the fact that I've managed to you know, get in it now shows that the old, uh, the old timber's starting to come off a bit, but enough about me. That swimming's doing you go some good, Dave. It must be, yeah. I've not drowned yet, so that's always a positive. <laughs> right, uh, so let's, uh, let's get cut to the chase. Let's first of all talk live streaming. Um, I played my part, I suppose, in the first League One broadcast, which uh, came from the Our League app. You might see it in, flashing in front of us there. Uh, do you remember that you can sign up, put whoever your club is, um, because I think the county memberships and things like that. Clubs can benefit from it, can't they? They, can. they, they get they get a percentage of of the of money as well, depending on how many uh, sign ups they get. So. For, for especially, it benefits the lower league clubs, especially because lower league clubs don't don't get as big as bigger money from big sponsors. So get on the lower league app, get signed up, put your team in, and hopefully you, you can uh, play your part in benefiting your club. Uh, I just wanted to say though, and, and do a bit of a reflection because, uh, as as you know, we've worked together on quite a number of games over the years. Um, we have a very different setup, it would have been fair to say. It's similar to what we've set up here today. So camera, everything into it, um, sort of sound box, which we've got our mics plugged into. This was the real deal on Sunday, you know. I didn't even get inside the ground. I was commentating from the back of a truck. You, you had all prom butties as well brought to you, didn't you? And uh, and coffees and selection of your choice, sir. Here's a, here's a glass of champagne, sir. I know that working... The to finest of working to the finest of Cumbrian champagne. Working to were particularly accommodating, so I have got to th uh, give a, a great thanks to, to all the guys that I met. Superb. It wasn't quite prawn butties or anything like that, but I did get as much orange juice as I could possibly handle, so that'll do for me. Not like, not like your dad at Lee, is he Dave? A uh, life member at Lee Centurions for a Parkinson prawn butter brigade. <laughs> uh. Minus the prawn sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so, uh, I mean, did, did you see some of that coverage, Drew? What did oh you yeah, I, w I watched it. I think I joined in it f about 15 minutes in and I, w I wasn't doing anything with me, with me Sunday at all. I was being a coach potato, didn't have anything to do. And that's perfect because the... There'd be so many more rugby league fans in my position where they're not where they're not doing anything on a particular day. You don't have to support either team involved just to get a, a little bit of that rugby league action in you for the day. Fantastic game, by the way. York v Workington. Workington made it really difficult at times for York. York on course for promotion now. That that was a massive hurdle for them. But now they've they've got over that one and and now the they're only a couple of uh, games away from from it all being done. Yeah, they put three cup finals to go. I think is the latest thing on the social media. I, I've got to pay credit as well to both teams because they built it up really well. On I, I liked media. I liked all the all the tweets from Workington throughout the week with Putin and Trump and Hearn. It, it was it was brilliant, wasn't it? Eddie Hearn, uh, Workington, do you reckon he, he knew what, who Workington were? Uh, well, I actually asked them about that when I got in the ground at Derwent Park and uh, they said, you know, I went down to, uh, talking to one of the directors and he said, you know, Dave, went down to Wembley um, doing what I would do every year and just spotted Eddie Earn sort of going eating a sandwich. So I thought, I'm going to go over and introduce myself and chance my arm and see whether he'll just do this little thing. And he did. And you know how many views that has had now? 35,000. Wow. That's what you call going viral. That's like when Fooey Fooey... How, how long was the video? 20 seconds? 20 seconds, 25 exactly, seconds Exactly, and, and that's how big of a difference it can make. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was massive to get shared and put in so many places. You also had former uh, New Zealand skipper Ruben Wickey as well 
giving mm. giving words mm. and p- pledging his support what to work. What a player he was. Oh, he's fantastic, what wasn't he? I mean, he finished off as a, a real toughest teak second rower, but started off as a centre mm. and was really good in the centres as well. He was so strong. He, he was one of my like kind of heroes growing up, kind of thing. And I was only very young when he was still playing. Then it turned into like Sonny Bill Williams, but. Ruben Wicky, what a player. I used to watch so many videos of his on YouTube, just the highlight reels. Unbelievable player. But going back to Workington, it's a massive shame, isn't it, what, what's happened there since, over the last couple of days. They, they had a, a fantastic crowd on at Derwent Park and then all spoiled by a, a, a burglary. Was it on the same night as, as the game or the, the night after the game? It was the. It was on the night of the game, but it was only discovered the morning after. Mm. So on the Monday morning, um, you know, I, I can only, I can only pass our thoughts and best wishes onto the club because that is just so so difficult because you work so hard and especially at clubs like that at that level, lots and lots of volunteers give plenty of time, give plenty of effort to, to really keep Workington on the map and keep them going and keep them progressing. And that just sets them back. And I'm going to sound a bit like Alan Partridge here, but I think that's actually subhuman scum, whoever's done that. <laughs> yeah, well, it is, to be fair. It's, it's just... Yeah, it's, it's just scummy behaviour, isn't it? I don't, it's... Be, when you see all the pictures on social media as it's well, heartbreaking, it's, isn't it? it's re- the offices are wrecked. The complete like the every, it's been trashed. It's not just been robbed. It's been trashed. The the club's been trashed. The offices have been trashed. Things have got stolen. It's it's not good for for the club, and the, and they would have no doubt lost all the all the profit they made on that day. You know what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping that they manage to catch the perpetrators and they put them in a training session right opposite. Ollie Wilkes and Fooey Fooey my my <laughs> and that is punishment enough because I tell you if you've got Fooey Fooey coming at you you're going to jump out of the way and I hope that they get a bit of tenderising from and uh, when, uh, speaking of Fooey Fooey my my I, I remember watching the game it was very late on I think it might have been 78th minute something like that and I can't remember who he just barged out the way. He just gave a left fend to someone and, and he just went straight back. Oh, he did, yeah. I about can't 20 remember. metres, wasn't it? it yeah. was like 20 metres backward roll. It was it? a shame because he got pulled back by the by the ref for, for something else, but he initially just palmed him off and he flew back at a good five yards, six yards, but fair play to the player. I can't remember who it was, but he got up and he, he was smiling about it and... And uh, he saw the funny side, but <laughs> fair play to him for fair taking play. it. Yeah, fair play indeed. So, uh, so that was my experience of, of the actual uh, commentary. As I said, brilliant experience. I really hope that it goes from strength to strength. And uh, they've got two more games that are scheduled in. The next one is for this coming Sunday, when it's over to Bootham Crescent. Uh, where it's your massive game. nights again, massive game. War of the Roses. War of the Roses against Oldham. Oldham's been going pretty well in the division as well. Um, had a big win against Coventry. I know we'll go through those in a little bit more detail in a while. Um, but yeah, I, I'm just really hoping that everybody jumps on board and, and really backs this. So. And, I, and I'm, I'm glad to see that York. I know there's a lot of talk in the, at the minute about new new um, ideas for the game or bringing back the War of the Roses comp. I'm all for it. We won't get into that today because that could be another half an hour discussion. That but might be a special. Yeah, it, it would. But it's good to see the clubs are jumping on it. It doesn't have to be Yorkshire, Lancashire, where the RFL organise it or Super League or whoever. These days, the, cl- the clubs are doing it themselves and it's good to see that York have come up with a uh, yeah, another good marketing campaign. Yep, yep. So, uh, well done to York City Knights. Um, right, the next thing I've got on the agenda is, this was reading the League Express this week, because th- we're heading towards an extraordinary general meeting on the 14th of September. So this is the entire Rugby League board, which includes representatives of Super League, Championship, League One, Community Game, Schools Game, the actual board of directors of the RFL, Everybody's going to be there. I don't know how they're going to get a room big enough for all these people. And the car park could just be really interesting. I've got uh, visions of it being, you know, like on that Mike Bassett where he drives in and he's just like Lastra, <laughs> yeah. and there's yeah. all those posh yeah. cars, you know. I've got a feeling that that might be a little bit like that, the car park. But um, uh, Some clubs might even share car share. Well, they could do, couldn't they? I mean, we've got, we have dual reg 
partnerships all the way through the season. What about Kasher to get to RFL meetings? Could hell happen, couldn't it? Um, but yeah, the interesting thing that I found from reading about this was the fact that only 24 of 26 championship and league one clubs have the right to vote. And the teams that aren't actually official members of the RFL are none other than our, our, our friends from Toronto and Toulouse. How does that work? Why are they even playing in our comp if they're not even members? Um, yeah, it's a, it's a tough one, isn't it? I think, and it, and it goes back to the, the Challenge Cup debate because they, they don't have to, to uh, compete in the Challenge Cup, do they? No, Toronto... To, to lose, don't, do they? T Toronto, Toronto, Toronto didn't last year. I know they're in it this year, weren't they? Yeah, they, get, they got knocked out to, to Warrington. And but Toulouse have done it previously as well, where they've been in it and then they've not. Yeah, I, I, think, I, think, I think they still need to vote because they're two pivotal clubs to all this structure change because they're two, two of the clubs who are vying for a Spot in Super League, but they won't have a vote. Exactly, they're not members. But I, I think they should. I, I think they should. I know. I know they're not members, but surely you've got to because, because they're they're the two clubs out two out of five clubs who want to be in that Super League, who, who want to have a Super League spot. They've got Super League ambitions, so I think they, they need to have a vote, don't they? they? They can't be expecting the likes of Batley and Dewsbury to to vote on behalf of them. You, each to their own, and each club needs needs a voice, don't they? And, and Toronto need a voice. Toulouse need a voice. They've got they have got plenty of voices who, who say how the game should be run and and what they think the game should be run like. Mm -hmm. But you need to you need to do it at, at the final stage, don't you? And I think I know they're not members, but come on, they've got they've got to have a vote. They're the two clubs who want to be in Super League, and and why to. I know there's a couple more, but two of the main clubs. Why th there is all this whole structure debate, isn't, mm -hmm. isn't there? Because there's probably let, let's be let's be real. There's probably Lee, London, obviously Lee before all this happened. Lee, London, Featherstone, Toulouse, Toronto, and uh, well, our Halifax is a club with Super League aspirations. Arguably not. I'd, they've been there before, though, haven't they? So well, you they think have, that long think term, they maybe want to do it. But maybe, maybe long term, look, maybe they're looking at a more holistic approach, mm, though, aren't they? Like, for example, Lee and Featherstone wanted it this year, didn't they? They wanted to get promoted to <laughs> Super League this year because most of Featherstone's playing squad were, were full time, some were part time. All of Lee's squad were, were full time. If you've got full time team, then you have got clear aspirations of being in Super League and Toronto and Toulouse. The two of them teams, and I, I just can't, I can't fathom why they've not got a vote, and why then the schools have got a say in that. The school game, I, I but think I, it's baff but baffling do, at times, Dev. I, I do agree that maybe those areas of the game deserve a vote. Ultimately, they're going to see some benefit, aren't they, of a of a deal or a, of a of a structure? <sighs> well, they are. <sighs> Well, you, well, it all depends on the, on what the structure is. Are, are they going to have a benefit? Or, or, well, you or you'd hope so. Anything you know, you know that the rugby league have something up the sleeve to actually be offering the clubs. I mean, we've not really heard a lot of it's all speculation, well, isn't it? A lot of it's speculation. A lot of it we're just running off the the reports here, and, and we we don't know if anything's finalised yet, apart from the, the, just the meeting taking place. We do, we've not got a Scooby Doo or what, yeah. what this new structure entails. Because we we've, we've, we, we've heard 12, 14, 12, haven't we? For the lineups of the league. Yeah, and, we, and then we heard the the, the big curveball was it last week and maybe maybe the week before where one team only one team will get relegated from Championship. You you're reading stuff you don't you don't know if it's true. You don't know if it's just a what a little birdie told them. I did, who knows? I've not. I've n no one's got a, a, a proper idea of what it's going to be yet. What does make it a little bit of a fast for me is that we're talking about the structure affecting next season. This one hasn't finished. <laughs> They're moving the goalposts, so all of a sudden it went from Swinton and Rochdale this past week playing a game which in reality meant very little because, with all due respect, both clubs look like they're heading down to League One in this current structure. But yet when they're talking about it, and it might end up being just one going down, that then puts a huge significance on that result, doesn't it? Well, yeah, and I was listening to the... the BBC Radio Manchester uh, podcast, what, what they do on Rugby League on, on a Thursday. Be nice and if you could share this, by the way, Jack. <laughs> and uh, Swinton, Swinton Lions head coach, Andy Maisie, uh, was, was, was on the phone. Chairman, he, he's chairman. Chairman, though. sorry, chairman. And um, 
it was it was basically saying this this Winton Rochdale game could effectively be like an hundred thousand pound game because it depending on work, which which league they'll they'll be in next year and, and they, they've not got how can they be expected to retain players for next year uh, and get them signed up to new deals for next year now when no, the players don't know where they're going to be. Well, the, the club don't know where they're going to be. It's interesting that they can't recruit for next year, bring more players in. So that, that's why clubs are, have to rely on Jewel Reg, because another, th- I think it was three Wigan players play for Swinton, two Warrington players play for Rochdale. Clubs have got to rely on Jewel Reg because they can't recruit their own players because of the structure. It's uh, an interesting point that you make there, and just to, to come back at that one, uh, I read something as well from the, the Dewsbury chairman, I think his name's Mark Sawyer, and he was saying that the Rams can't actually plan themselves for next season, because they don't know how many home games they're going to have, they don't know, so they're, they we're at that time where everybody's wanting to release season ticket details, but yeah, you don't know the structure, you don't know how many home games you've got, you don't know whether you're going to be involved in extra cup competitions, like we talked about last week, Potentially, and my idea of everybody going on and playing for about four different cups, which well, didn't sound popular amongst <laughs> these two, you know. And, and certainly, Drew, you, you sort of shut your head and thought, "What's he going on about?" Which I know you do regularly, anyway. <laughs> um, uh, but he does make a good point there. You've mentioned it. You've also, you've obviously mentioned about what uh, what Swinton are, are going through with that. We, we've talked about Rochdale. I, I've had some really good dealings with with Rochdale this uh, past eighteen months or so, but. Yeah, that, that's sort of where we are, which is really sad, isn't it? And we keep talking about getting organised, but how can you get organised when you don't know how many games you're going to be playing? Well, put it this way, we thought this, ta- this time two months ago we were saying the, the structure won't, won't be changing for next year because it's too late, and now it's gone full circle and we're on about the structure changing for next year when there's only, what, a, a full month left of rugby league action? Well, I think grand finals on October 13th, that, uh, and then that, that's it. We've got just over a month of rugby league action, and we're on about change, change structure again for next year. I, ju- I just think let's let's finally decide on something now, and that we've got to stick f- stick with it for at least ten years, so we, and, and we've got to see it through. Because when did the, when was the Super Eights introduced? Was it 2015? That or uh, this 20- is the fourth season. Okay, so yes, yeah, so it's the fourth season. We're already changing it. So, and then we can, we, can, we just can't be a, a sport because the sport won't be able to grow. We're always on about expanding. We're always on about growing the sport down south and, and wherever. We won't be able to do that. We just keep changing the structure every three years. If you if you if you look at the new like the neutral rugby league fan, not the the rugby league fanatic, but the the person who. Maybe flicks flicks it over on a Friday and, and watches watches rugby. League. Isn't a fan of any team. Their uh, their minds gonna <laughs> gonna be boggled, aren't they? By when, when the new structure changes, because I've got I've got mates who who are football fans, mm-hmm. but they, they like it. They like watching rugby league, and they're always like, "So, how, how does this how does this playoff work? How, how does this these super eights work? How, how do teams get promoted?" Did they then and look at like you as though you've got like a, got like a degree, a massive <laughs> degree in sort of applied mathematics or something? Uh, yeah, and, the, and the, they're completely <laughs> confused. It takes a couple of times to to tell to tell people and get it into people's minds that what all the structure is and how teams go up and down and what you get for winning the league <laughs> it's uh, it's mental and it's 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 just it's just a bit of a, a laughing stock isn't it at the moment because we can't just keep changing and uh, so whilst we've got the air of structure around us um, how about this one? Can I chuck my Dave Parkinson route forward? You heard about the, uh, or you eventually heard about the, the extra cup competition last week and the pools and then deciding all that. I've got another belting idea. Cool. It, this is a great one. Hear me out. Hear me out. Right, there's too many games in Super League that mean nothing, right? Absolutely bog all. Mm. You've got those teams at the top. Wait, can I just pull you up on this? Who are really good. And they've got those teams at the bottom who are really struggling. I I know what you're going to tell me. You're going to say about dead rubber games, aren't you? (laughs) The the Wigan and St. Helens one. Which was still a dead rubber. No. St. Helens will still win it. Well, they they, they will, but (laughs) that game was anything but. It was a great game, actually. A dead rubber. I will uh, will, uh, defer to your great judgment there, to be fair. Uh, However, the structure that I'm wanting to see, what about a 10-team Super League? 
you could actually nearly then mm. get two divisions of full time teams then. Similar to like what we talked about with the French Rugby Union last year. Of course, how you fund it is a completely different kettle of fish altogether. <laughs> well, um, you'd probably have to ask the, the club directors about that one, Dave. But, but, but I reckon but not. All right, look at the table now. Which, which, so that, so the, just the bottom two would uh, go so to the, the second tier? So the bottom two would go to the second tier, so you'd have a knock-on effect. So that would then, you keep the second tier as it is, so you keep, you keep them at... Uh, you keep them at, at, so they've got the 12 clubs plus the two going down, so that's your 14, and then you keep Betfred League 1 at 14 teams. Would you change the promotion relegation in League 1 or not? To, to the full time, uh, to the second full time tier? Um, or would you just have one, one, two going on? I think that there's always got to be that element of promotion and relegation because in, in this country especially, you look at other sports, you mentioned there about your mates in football, you need to test yourself, don't you? You can't just keep doing what you've always done because you always get what you always got. So I reckon that in, in doing this, we might be in a, a better situation possibly. Well, just uh, just about that, Dave, I think if you had the, the, the two tiers, there'll still be part-time teams in there, won't there? At the moment, yeah, there would be. But you're hoping that there'll be enough uh, finance generated. Again, I don't, I don't know. This is just an idea. I'm, I'm throwing it out there because I'm just thinking you might get a better standard of game. I mean, to, to, to be fair, you know, we've seen some dead rubbers already in this Super 8s. Hull seem to have put the queue on the rack. Um, uh, mm, I understand where you, where you are coming from there, Dave. You could then have a top five playoff, which they've already talked about anyway, which worked last time because you got high intensity playoff games. The teams that finish below mid table, because I think that this eight cuts too far into the division at the moment anyway. So you get some really average teams who've done naff all all season, suddenly finding themselves with a spot. Well, in the you top usually, eight. usually find seventh and, and eighth. Um, aren't playing for anything at no, all. No, they get cut adrift we really could, early, we don't we? Catalans as well, ten points away from fourth place Warrington. It's it's near enough impossible, isn't it? Yeah. It's and then they're playing an extra seven games for completely nothing. So I'm just I'm just putting it out there, and I, again, um, I, I would love to to hear your thoughts about it as well. So comment, share. This is where you can really set fire to the keyboard and start having an Alice Cooper moment if you Give want. Give us your thoughts. We want to know your thoughts as well, and maybe next week we can go through some of the comments and, and give our opinions on your opinions and make it into a real debate. Uh, I mean, what do you reckon? Just uh, do, do you think? I, I, I could I, 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 I couldn't see that working just because you couldn't have two full, completely full time leagues and I think it would still be unfair on a couple of part-time teams because I, I, I look at championship now and I think this this league, don't don't get me wrong this year, the championship has been phenomenal this year and it's been arguably enter more entertaining than, than Super League, it's been so competitive it's, it's, it's been great but I do feel sorry for the likes of Batley, Dewsbury, Rochdale, Swinton, like Rochdale and Swinton this year no disrespect to the clubs whatsoever, but they have been whipping boys for the likes of Toronto. And that's expected because it's full-time v, v part-time. You can't expect to come up, because they're coming up against um, six, six full-time teams. You can't, and, it, and say if you play, play three after each other, then it's, well, well what's, the, what's the point? What, do, you, do you understand where I'm coming from? Though? Yeah, I've got another thought then, right? Uh, again, I've not thought this through, so this is just like straight off the cuff. Straight off the cuff. We've already got the eights. Do you reckon an actual eight structure would work? Eight teams, eight teams. You've then got all those, or virtually all those full-time teams in your two divisions then. But then, then you could have top four playoffs. Promotion and relegation between them. And then any teams coming in, then they would have to show that they can go full-time. They would have to show finances. They'd have to get the have show that they've got the backing. I don't know, I'm just I'm just floating some ideas out there while we're talking all about change. Uh, and I know that you said let's stick with what we've got and keep it for the next Well I'm not, I'm not saying let, let's stick with this exact structure what we're in now with the, the with the qualifiers. I mean when they have this meeting and when it the I don't know when the decision will come about, but when they finally make a decision and it's released probably the week at Grand Final, knowing, knowing our sport, it'll, it'll, it'll be announced two, two days before Grand Final. But 
I just think we need to, we need to stick with it. We can't keep changing. It's 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 getting ridiculous now, really, because you can't. We just can't play another three seasons of this new structure and then go back to to something else or go or create another plan, another big idea. We just need to to stick stick with what we got. I think we keep reinventing. Even it, even, we? even if there is potentially better ideas. We need to stick with what we got because we just can't keep changing. We can't expect the the game to grow. We honestly can't. Uh, again, we'd love to hear your thoughts about it as well. So you've heard what we've both got to say about it. Right, competition time. You may have noticed this in the background for the last few weeks. It's almost like a weather map. So I can say, yes, it was a little bit drizzly up at Derwent Park at the weekend. Uh, I can say, you know, the outlook's gloomy at the Lee Sports Village. And obviously it's a, it's a scratch map as well. So obviously if you, if you like going to all the away games, then this is the, this is this will be a, a good little novel, novelty piece for yourself because... Uh, You've got you've got some uh, some grounds. Pennine Way, Hemel Stag, Hemel yeah, Stags fans. Yeah. I have to admit, I've never been to Pennine Way. You've got I just love the fact that it's based in Hemel and it's called Pennine Way, and we're a Pennine sport. <laughs> yeah, well, well, oh no, sorry, well, I've upset well, the expansionists again. But uh, you've got Canada down here. You've got France over here. You've got Toulouse and Catalans. Uh, but do you want to get your hands on one of these lovely maps? Perfectly displayed between us. We've had the set square out and all sorts to try and ensure it's level. And I'm looking at it. I'm still not sure we've managed it. I don't, to be honest I don't think it's level. Do you I want one of these? Level. All you've got to do. We need. We need to get one. Um, what what are they called? What are they call a banner. No, a leveler. What what are they call them levelers? Them yellow. What you? Put, I know what you mean. Yeah. What are they called? What you put pictures on and spirit level. I don't think that's it, is it? The spirit level. <laughs> that's, that's not it, Dave. If you've been to Wix or been to B&Q and you can inform us what one of those is, add them in the comments as well. Uh, so, Drew, if someone wants to get their hands on a lovely poster like this, what have they got to do? Just share this post and we'll click on the shares after the video. We'll pick a, a winner from the people who've shared it. We just want to get Love Rugby League Weekly out there to as many people as we can. And uh, we want to just uh, get a, a bigger audience than what we've already got. We had over one and a half thousand views last week, Dave. Which I think is a, actually that comes to about two and a half thousand because of the fact that it got posted twice. All right. <laughs> I, I managed to post it twice. All right. I well, it like twelve hundred on one and eighteen hundred okay. on the other. Well, so. well, there we go. Then I, I didn't know you even posted it twice. But so we've had over two thousand views. We want to keep it growing. We want, we want to expand a little bit more. We want to get more discussion from you guys. Just share it. They're, they're normally worth over twenty pounds. Thanks to Stadium Hoppers for for creating the match for Love Rugby League, and uh, yeah, we'll we'll pick a winner after well before next week's show, and, and we'll send it out to you. I tell you what, I also love as well, and uh, you know we are displaying that we're a right couple of messy so and sos with all this stuff in front of us. If you've got more. Uh, rugby league memorabilia that you want to send to us as well. Um, I, I'm always happy to wear a top. Always happy to wear a top. Cap. Can't beat a freebie, can you? Can't yeah. beat a freebie. So, yeah, if you want your amateur team covering, by all means, send us that as well and uh, uh, we'll can't. get it on third because we've got a little bit of mention from my team, Lee East, as well. Yeah, I've just, I've just seen that you've got, you've got Lee East there, Dave. We've, we've got a few programmes as well. A few, Few books. We'll be running a competition for for no helmets required as well in a couple of weeks' time. And that's Gavin, Gavin Willis's book. Uh, we'll get that out to. We'll get that competition sorted for a couple of weeks' time. But Dave, what about what about these balls, eh? Bring back the steed, eh? That one's been uh, this steed and one in front of us here uh, has been burning in my eyesight all the way through because it's really bright, isn't it? Tell you what, you'd you'd hate to knock that. You'd know if you'd knock that off, wouldn't you? <laughs> if you were playing with it <laughs> what a ball what a ball ball well, he's, he's aced that to be fair um, so so yeah so that's that's generally where we are up to with regards to that uh, let's get back to another talking point um, and let's run through these results from last week so you had Castleford Tigers 36 uh, Catalan's Dragons 4 Expected. Expected, very much expected. I think Catalan still turn up with a with a couple of beers in changing rooms, if I'm honest. <laughs> and why not, eh? Why not? Why what, wouldn't you do it? What about this for a result, though? Because Huddersfield season has just about been 
put to bed uh, thanks to Wakefield Trinity winning 42 points to 16. How many points? I think was it with 34 unanswered points in the second half. I think uh, it was 12 6 at half time, so 36 unanswered points. Can't do me maths. But there you go. Well, no, no, 30. Yeah, I can't do my maths either because it's 36 points scored by Wakefield and four points in the second half for Rusfield. <laughs> there we go. I'm, we're, not we're, even, I'm not even counting, Dave. I've, I've given up. I only got to see on my maths sheet, you see. But going, going back to, to Wakey, they're a great side. They're a brilliant side. So watch I enjoy times. watching them. They can beat anyone in the comp. It's just about maintaining consistency, which the, which they struggle with this year. That's all. That's all they've got to improve on. Is just getting a little bit more consistent. Because I think was it they, they beat Saints at home earlier on in the season. They beat another couple of big teams as well. It's just they can beat Saints one week and then be disastrous. Another another week. I just can't. I can't really fathom it out. At come times on, we Wakefield. Come on, Drew. Now's your chance to really wax lyrical because I know you was at this game. Saint Ellen's against Wigan. What a game! What it, you're, we always go on about. Oh, what an advertisement for rugby league. But if you if you if you want to see a real rugby league game, you you need to watch that back. That or watch the highlights at least. It was phenomenal. Both teams played the part. I know. 30-10 to Wigan's a, a bit of a easy, comfortable score line from from the out, but Saints played the part for for the hour. Uh, for, for 60 minutes, it was really competitive, and but but Wigan Wigan played very freely in attack. They played like they, they had no curves in the world about about the the consequences what might face them. But I think you could see from from um, the burning ambition from the players that. They did it for Sean Wayne, departing personnel at the end of the season. You've got a couple of personnel leaving the club. You've got Sean Wayne, Sam Tompkins, John Bateman, Ryan Sutton. Uh, who else? Any, anyone else? No, I don't. I think. But I think that. It's a race. They haven't announced it yet. I, th- I think. It, I think. It, I think it'd be clear to to see that the players made sure because it, it was their last trip to Saints. They could still face each other in the final. Or, or whatever so I, I, I just think it was a phenomenal performance from Wigan Saints to be fair Saints weren't awful mm-hmm. they weren't they weren't awful they, but Wigan were just better and I think it was a true captain's performance from, from Sean O'Loughlin Joe Greenwood best game in a Wigan shirt yet George Williams had his best game in a long long time he, he, he ran with the ball he attacked the line built up a good combination with Joe Greenwood Um and to be fair, I think it was one of Ben Barber's worst performances in the Saints shirt this year. Anyway, I think he, it he looked like a, he didn't want to be there, didn't he? He, a couple of, he had a couple of bad games last season because he was only just getting back into into the swing of things and back into the fitness. But I think um, he, he came up with a couple of defensive errors, in in my opinion. And Barber, we've not seen that from Barber this year. I think for Tom Davis's try for for Wigan, I think he was a little bit weak on the challenge in the corner. I think. Uh, on a, on, a, on a Ben Barber good day, I think it, Tom Davis would have just been bundled into touch. And um, it, um, Oliver Gildart's try, when he went Short flying, base, flying down that left side. I, thought I, I was a bit cautious when, when I looked at the team sheet before the start of the game. I thought, Oliver Gildart on the wing. I can't remember the last time he played on the wing. Cause I, and I remember a standout game when he did play on the wing was against Brisbane Broncos in the... The World Club Series when Corey Oates uh, had a bit of a field there, and um, so I thought oh, it's going to be interesting to see how he gets on. But he made a, l- a little bit of a positioning error on Tommy Makington's kick, uh, on Danny Richardson's kick to, to Tommy Makington, but unbelievable finish. Uh, what a game! There's just so many talking points from that game. Sean O'Loughlin coming back made a massive difference, though, for Wigan. Can I uh, chuck something in here as well? I mean, um, you know, as I'm always one to be looking at the stats involved in a rugby league game, Wigan made 400 metres more than St Helens. That's a huge amount of difference when you you, you, you add it all together. Um, I, think, I just think Wigan had a lot more a lot more of the ball because whenever Saints seem to have the ball, they, they just lost it. And I think uh, Justin Albrook said that after the game, he was he, he, he said something along the lines of, "Wigan did everything right. They beat us in every single area, whereas we were just fumbling our way through the 80 minutes." You and know I what? Think I'm going to say that was a perfect summary of the game. I'm going to say something here which you might not agree with. I reckon that there's still massive improvement to come from Wigan. 
No, I, I do. I, I genuinely. You look at it. They've completed it seventy percent in the game. I, I, th I think there's a lot, a lot more to come. I just think Wigan blew sets away because they played so positively. We don't, we've, not, we've not seen that from Wigan for for a, quite a while because they, obviously we know that they, they, Wigan pride themselves on the defence, so their attack comes second. But they both they both came first on on them occasions because yeah. Saints had a lot of a lot of ball on Wigan's line and they defended brilliantly at times. Dan Sargent's one of one of his best games in a while. But going back to what you said there about uh, the the meters made, it was it was the clean breaks because Joe Greenwood made made a, uh, about three clean breaks because uh, George Williams slipped him through the gap. Eleven clean breaks overall for Wigan in the game, you know. So that's enough to win two games, never mind one. Of course, yeah. Uh, St Helens made just the four. So even then, you know, and that's what I was saying, Wigan can get even better, which is ominous for the rest of the competition with these last few weeks on the offer. Huge, huge marker was put down for the title credentials. And I think before the game started, I think a lot of people still predict his sense to, to win the grand final this year. But a few heads were turned, in my opinion. Quite a few heads. Uh, yeah, but yeah, great, great advert and belting for a dead rubber. <laughs> right, moving on. The, the next game that we're going to talk about was a dead rubber. It was awful. It's the worst Super League game I have seen televised. Which one you want about? Yes, we're on about <laughs> Warrington. We're on about Hull. Uh, Eighty points to ten. Eighty points to ten. You've got to be so embarrassed if you're either a Hull player or anybody connected with that club after going down to such a, a magnitude of defeat like that. Absolutely abysmal from Hull. Absolutely abysmal. I was at, I was at the game and was covering it for for LoveRubyLeague.com and it was just shocking. Honestly, shocking. One of one of the worst games of rugby league I've witnessed in a long, long time. Can I chuck a little stat in here as well? Uh, because we, we just referred to Wigan making four hundred extra meters than St Helens. Guess how many extra metres that Warrington made on Hull? Well, 2,000. Bit too much, because generally you'd only get a team well, yeah, to about 1,800 top I'm, level. But I'm thinking Warring 80 points to 10 with the, with the ball in hand. Warrington, Warrington ran for 1,600 metres in the game. Uh, Hull ran for just about 780, I think. That's, that's, massive that's shocking because you get a play sometimes you run 200 metres on the road in a game don't you Dave yeah. so and that's, that's, sometimes that's you, you look at sort of average gains and almost everybody in a Warrington shirt had an average gain of about seven and a half, eight metres in the whole ranks yeah, you're so looking at threes and superior. fours yeah. oh, they, wow. they, it was just like wow. chalk and cheese weren't they both it, of those teams it, it, I think it was a perfect way, well, Warrington bounced back in perfect fashion. They couldn't have done it in, in better style, really. It was, a, it was a solid performance from Warrington. And 14 try and score. Bryson Goodwin got five. Brilliant for him. Brilliant for, for the club. Steve Price spoke about it after the game. Actually revealed that he asked the RFL if, if the game could be put back. He wasn't, he wasn't happy about the short turnaround. Well, it's something that I, I've spoken about elsewhere. I think it's ridiculous asking five, a club to five days so soon. Five days after a Challenge Cup final, it's it's not great, is it? I think there, there were murmurs. Steve Price didn't say they wanted it on the Saturday, but there were murmurs that Warrington wanted the game swapped with the Leeds Hokia game. So they wanted Leeds Hokia to be on the Thursday and, and Warrington to be played on the Saturday. That way, the the ball's still on telly, so it w won't really affect Sky. Um, and I thought, well, why, seriously, why why has that not happened? Because yeah. Leeds and OKR already had a week off for, for the Challenge Cup final. So they, they'd already rested up for two weeks, really. Obviously, they'd be training, but they've, rest, they've not had a game for two weeks. So why are they on a later, on a, a later day than Challenge Cup finalists? Because Catalan's only played on Saturday as well. I just think it was a little bit unfair on the walls, but then I interviewed Bryson Goodwin after the game and he said the short turnaround uh, favoured Warrington in the end. They, he said that... I suppose the good thing about it, they could get it out of the exactly. system, couldn't they? And he said it, it would have been worse if, it w if the game would have been on a Sunday because they would have been thinking about it more and it would have been bottled up inside them a little bit more. So there's pros and cons to it. Fantastic performance from Warrington, 14 tries. It was a little bit easy for them. And I know we, 
you and James gave Tyron Roberts, and I, I, he didn't have the best game in the grand final. You gave him a little bit of step last week. Brilliant again. Is it twelve goals he kicked this week? I think. It, I think. <laughs> I think it he scored will. a try as well. Or did he lay about two or three? Yeah, off? He, yeah. he came up with a couple of assists. It was a really good display for me. I was, I was impressed with him. Bryson Goodwin obviously got the, the headlines with five tries. It's rare somebody scores that amount of tries in a game, isn't it? To oh, be fair, so oh, he I, I asked the him, accolade. I asked uh, when, when was the last time he did score five, and he said it was it. It was in high school, so, <laughs> so for, a long time between it because it yeah. was about 32, 33, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, so for, fair play to him going back to. Well, abysmal performance, and and Danny Houghton, no doubt, will will come on to that in a, in a minute. Well, in fact, let's Danny, move on to that. Danny Houghton's uh, post-match interview with Sky Sports, very, very good interview from from himself. Sport, very honestly, and that's all you can ask really. That's what you want to you want from a sporting interview. And he just said, basically, if, you, if, you, if you've not seen it, we should be ashamed of ourselves. It was abysmal. We're in a dark place. There's, it, we're in a, it was a very emotional. That we're finding it difficult to get out of it, and you could see on his face, couldn't you, that, that it affected him personally, not just as a as a player or as a team. It affected him personally. It was an emotional interview, and it's rare that you get those real insights of honesty whenever you speak to a sports person, because there's a certain number of stock answers. I know uh, you came up with a few last week, didn't you? And I thought that was just like nearly every interview that I've heard from a Wigan player over the last two or three years, to be honest. Um, so, you know, a rare insight in honesty there. I still rate Danny Houghton. I know they were debating it on another show that I was watching a couple of days ago um, about where he sits amongst the, uh, the the sort of number nines in Super League. I'd still have him there probably in my top five or six. Probably, yeah. But I, He's the I, sort of guy I'd want to go to war with, though, because you know that he'd always pull his tripe out for you. Yeah, 100%. I, I do rate him. He gets through a lot, a hell of a lot of work. He, he's, he's one of them players who just makes over 50 tackles a week, and, and that's what number nines do, don't they? I, I think... England, uh, we're blessed. They're, they're a bit, yeah, they're, they're very blessed in in positions where you don't need many many of them, if you know what I mean. Because we seem to have a lot of great wingers, a hell of a lot of great wingers, but you can only obviously play two. A hell of a lot of great number nines, you can only play two. Uh, well, one, but maybe two on the bench if you if you have one on the bench. But go, just let me ask you a question, Dave. Okay. If you who would be your number nines for England? My nines for England, based on this season, would be Roby and Clark at Warrington, I think. Uh, but you could say that you could chuck a McShane in there and do exactly. a fantastic job. Exactly. You could chuck a Houghton in there and do a great, great work. That's what I mean. And, and Sam Powell. Sam Powell. You on, know, on he gives you some, some great versatility with being able to play at halves with ease as well. Um, I happen to think he's about a half bat than he is a hooker. I've always thought that ever since I don't I think was that. a kid. I think he's more of a. And who could him what he is. But I think uh, he's a cracking player, you know, and, and arguably, you know, these are guys that should also be in and around that England squad moving but forward. But that's what I mean, you can only, it's, it's just a shame that you can only have, because it's say, it's say if we were blessed with front rowers, and yeah. you could have 10 in the squad, couldn't you? But number nines were, were very blessed. I just want to move on, because I know that we're sort of being uh, pushed a little bit for time. Um, and I want to get this point in because in the aftermath of this entire defeat for Hull, uh, Adam Pearson came out with a real cutting article in an interview with, I think it was the Hull Daily Mail, where he talked about um, the needs to be changed. He's already made one change in Gareth Ellis coming onto the coaching staff for next season uh, to assist Lee Radford. Um, but is this a case of him handing out too many contracts early at Hull? And when he's talked about sending players to Doncaster, that completely disrespects League One. It does disrespect Doncaster. I was, I was reply, uh, quite surprised, actually, at, at the comments about Doncaster because I just thought... Mm, it's you don't go bringing another club into your discussion. That's, that's something between Hull, isn't it? Well, that's exactly. Thing. And, and don't go mentioning another team. And their and their players have got a lot of experience at Doncaster this year, and a lot of players have, have actually appreciated being at Doncaster because you always see Hakim Maloudi's uh, Twitter posts, and he, Did you he see loves his try? Oh, unbelievable! Oh, absolutely but brilliant. He man. loves playing at Doncaster when he when he doesn't because he's he's not a first team well an out and out first team player yet. So he loves playing at Doncaster because it's still a competitive level of rugby league 
And uh, you've got the likes of Jez Litton, who's been there this year. Um, Jansen Turger, obviously he's not not there anymore. He's at Salford, but there's more experience. Cameron Scott, the the young centre, who's played a few Super League games, and he's been at Doncaster this year. Um, they, they, they've had they've had quite a few plays at, at Doncaster, and I just thought it's a little bit harsh on Doncaster, in my opinion, that that he made that comment. But to be fair. But f- full credit to to Pearson for for coming out with that interview. Not apart from the, the little Doncaster bit, I think he spoke a lot, a lot of sense and and just told it how it is. And going back to to the thing you, you mentioned about contract extensions, obviously Mark Minicello didn't play. They handed him on. He didn't he didn't play in the. Oh, I mean, the don't defeat. get me wrong. You know, Hull work up to the bone. I'm not not disputing that. I don't. That. Th- no, I don't. I don't think they were really. They, 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 they only well, had seven. On, okay, so they only yeah. had seven first team players out. Seven first, for seven. That's seven first team players, though. You look at witness. You get a score of twenty five. Don't look you? at look at witness. What they've done this year. Do I have to? Well, yeah, but they they've not lost eighty points to ten, and they've played with more than seven first team players out. Yeah, but they've they, you can't you can't compare. They've gone nineteen games. Competitive games on the. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not. I'm not saying Hullowers and Winners. I'm not saying that. In fact, that'd be a right but, crap game, wouldn't it? Between I'm, them I'm, two at well, the moment. The point I'm trying to make is Winners have played. I think Winners played with like 11 first team players earlier on in the season, and they have not gone to the to the manner in defeat of an 80 points to 10 score line. I mean, this is the second time in about that, six weeks for Hull as well, isn't it? Cause well, they got they got slapped. Was it 72-6 off Wakey? Uh, it was a big... It was 72-10, I think. 72-10. 72-8. And then that's like that. another huge score line. And, and Hull shouldn't be doing... Look at the back line, what they had. Jamie Shaw, Brett Fremo, uh, Carlos Tuamavave, Fatuli Talano, who was the other, who was the other centre? Uh, they were garbage, weren't they? Uh, Griffin, Josh Griffin. Josh Griffin. Yeah, that, that, that's, their sta- that's their starting back line. A front row of Scott Taylor, Danny Oates, and Mickey Pear. Well, they didn't do too bad. The well, they, no, they didn't. They didn't. But with all them, per- the key personnel on the field, they should be doing better than, than what they are. Lee Maris, he played fantastically well at Magic Weekend for Hull. I think that was his, his debut, and he had a couple of good games after that. So he should be able to to deal with the pressure of uh, of playing in Super League now. Um, who else? Who, who else were playing in in the the forward pack for uh, Dean for Hadley, Hull? Danny Washbrook. Dean Hadley, I've been been a fan of Dean Hadley this year. He's he's uh, been brilliant because he's played at number nine. He's played at. Uh, off the bench, he's played in the back row. He's played at loose forward this year. He's very versatile, isn't he? Very versatile. He's a, he's a decent player to have in your squad. So yeah, don't don't he wash broke uh, that that, man that team should not be getting beat eighty points to ten off Warrington. That it, it, that shouldn't. Tonga captain Sika Manu. That that team though is capable of winning that game. What do you put it down to then? Like they've got nothing to play for, have they? They can't make the top four. But you don't How just do the players get motivated. You I, I, don't just chuck it away, though. No, I don't. Do I, I am, and I'm not. I'm not saying that they should play for the jersey. That's what they get paid to do. They should. There was a, a decent number of travelling LFC fans. Oh, yeah, yeah. Really uh, good at Warrington, really good support, especially for a Thursday as well. Because we all know what that M- M62 is like uh, on them diversions past ten o'clock. Shambolic. Anyway, going back to it. You've got to get another high horse here. They've, they've, they've just got. They, they know they've got nothing to play for. I think Lee, Lee Rafford knows they've got nothing to play for. And it's it's just one of them. How would you get up? How would you get up for a game that even if you even if you win eighty points to ten, nothing comes of it. You lose eighty points to ten, nothing comes of it. Nothing can happen. Mm. That's it. Nothing, nothing can be changed. Interesting. Let's talk at a level where lots of things are happening, where it's all going on. To be honest, massive win for Salford, sixty-two points to four. They're looking like they're sitting pretty, heading back into Super League aren't they, next year. Another man of the match performance from Jackson Hastings as well. There, unbelievable player. player. I think, yeah, I think maybe well, Salford will be facing a very, very, very tough attack. Challenge to to keep all of them for for 2019, but I think Super League will, will face a very tough challenge in keeping all of them because I think he'll be 
He'll be back in the NRL I'm unfortunately in demand. next season. Yeah, I think he will. Uh, the next game, I thought this was an absolute cracker to be honest. I only caught it on catch up because I was busy all Saturday afternoon with the amateur club. Uh, but uh, Leeds against Hull Kingston Rovers. That was end to end. Brilliant, brilliant advert. Well, yeah, but two defences like turnstiles as well, I think. Um, I enjoyed that game though. Yeah, it, 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 it was good to watch, but. If you score 36 points, you shouldn't be losing, should you, really? Good point, good point. You, I think that's sc- what Kevin Sinfield said as well. What was it? it? Was yeah. it? I, 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 didn't see his, I didn't see his post-match quotes, but if you score 36 points, you, sh- you should not be losing. Uh, fair play to OKR. Take a, a big step further into, uh, into laying down the, the um, Super League status for next year. The next one, Toronto, again, looking like they're building some momentum there, beating London 34 points to 22. The only concern I'm sure that Paul Rowley has is the way that his side just seems to, at times, just mm. gift points to the opposition. I mean, they were leading by 20 nil at half-time. I think they upped it to 32 nil, they, they And then they just back, sort of like sat back, yeah. didn't they? But, but fair play to London, because they're a very spirited bunch, because I remember a couple... Of, I, don't, I don't think it was last week. I think it might have been the, the week before against Leeds. They were getting battered by Leeds at one point, maybe 42 points to to 10 or something like that. They, they scored a lot of tries in in the last 20 minutes of games, and so that shows that they, they never they never say die attitude from from the Broncos. And what a job Danny Wall's done this year, even if they they don't make the the million pound game. Uh, and sorry, Witness fans, we do have to mention this: uh, to lose Olympique coming up with a massive win against the Witness Vikings. How good are they at the moment coming forward? Huge win, and how good are they to watch, Dave? Oh, they brilliant. are brilliant to watch, and they've got some cracking players, Super League-worthy players. They've, they've got, they play like a team, they, they, they're fantastic with a ball in hand, and you've got the likes of Jonathan Ford, who's a, a very, very classy player. Stan Robin, you've got a couple of ex, ex-Super League forwards as well in, in the system, Sam Rapira, Eddie Pettibone. Uh, Con Mika and they've, and they've got some real nice French talent as well in, in Mac Carella is it? Am I pronouncing yeah, yeah, that Mac right Carella. Dave? Mac Carella. Unbelievable player incredible player one of the best players in championship I'll this year I'll come back to Mac Carella actually in a couple of minutes but if that's okay Just a, a, a quick touch on Widnes all but down all but relegated now They're waving the, the white Vikings. flag And that's the disappointing thing are. isn't it I think Francis Cummings highlighted after the game as well That some of the players just threw the towel in When, when the going got tough in the game So it it's, happen, it's, it? it's not a good sign I think they're all, all but relegated now they, They've still got to go to, to Toronto as well it's a v- I don't think they'll make the million pound game Let's whip through these next four quickly The Championship Shield And it's not just because Lee lost this weekend Because I'm going to give you a bit of a chance to have a go at me Considering that I've had a go at Wigan this last couple of weeks And uh, you can do it on behalf of James Who I'm sure would be giving me plenty of stick Let's just run through these results though Barrow 16, Batley 36 Sheffield Eagles 20 Dewsbury Rams 30 Swinton Lions 23 Rochdale Hornets 18 We've already touched upon that game And uh, Featherstone Rovers 22 Lee Centurions 4 uh, Patched up Featherstone Rovers side Only 14 players How does that happen in professional ranks? It's quite sad to see I think Dave mm. it's, it's, it's very sad to see I, I know we've seen in the last month or two Featherstone and Lee have both had player exodus <laughs> haven't they? they they've both had lots of players leave the club Gaz Ock and, and Tom Holmes being the high profile names from, from Rovers well Gaz is still there till the end of the season isn't he well he is but, but, but he, he, knows he's, he knows he's going to, to be leaving the club and, and obviously Richard Moore knows he's going to be leaving the club so they'll probably be falling off a little bit I think bit. there's a number of players yeah, that have already been took. they've been linked with other players yeah. they've signed the two Boas brothers aren't they for next season great signings as well be really way. entertaining I've, in I Championship was, uh, next year I was particularly Watson Boas uh, at the World Cup last year for Papua New Guinea. He's the younger one. I think he's 23, maybe 24. Great, great, great talent. I think he's, he could be in in Super League in a couple of years. Do you think this is a knock-on effect, though? Of um, I'm going to give you a very quick briefing because I know you like I know you like the old reserves debate. Do you think this is a knock-on effect of not having a reserve grade competition where you can slot players in if you run into? Because I mean they've got a number of injuries. They've got players banned at Featherstone. They couldn't re- get any players in on dual reg from uh, Leeds Rhinos. Uh, who you can understand them wanting everybody on deck, can't you? Because they're fighting for the lives. Well, why? Yeah, it's. 
it's a tough one with the championship, I think, because we're always on about the the, the player pool and the, how it's not how it's hashtag de- player pool. How, mm. how it's declining and how it's not getting any better. So I think it should be mandatory for Super League clubs, uh, compulsory. Sorry, for Super League clubs, they need to have one. For championship, I think it's a little bit different. I think championship clubs should have the option to to have one or not. I know lower league clubs like Halifax and Keithley have them. Fair play to them. It's great if you can get the finance to make it work. Brilliant. Featherstone might not be able to make it work, so it's a, it's a tough one to say on that, Dave, I think. OK. Uh, in League One, the results were Bradford, Bulls 54, Keith Cougars 4, Doncaster 38, Newcastle Thunder 21, Hemel Stags 13, Whitehaven 50. That's a nod. An odd scoreline, that one, isn't it? Hunslet 48, London Scholars 12, North Wales Crusaders 66, West Wales Raiders 0. In the Old Welsh Derby. In the Old Welsh Derby, yes, that's right, yeah. Glad to see you catching on. <laughs> and uh, Oldham 58, Coventry verse 6, and then that great game which we talked about earlier on, which uh, I had um, great fun and immense pleasure. I was made up for you as well, that. Dave. I was made up for you getting that gig. Oh, thank you. One of the most underrated commentators is in rugby league, mate. Head's growing. Head's growing, right. And, uh, so, yeah, I mean, that... The, the, that just showed, though, that there is life outside of Super League as well, didn't it? You know. Um, but I think I think this year in particular, it's, it, the 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 Championship and League One seem to catch more eyes than usual. I think I think it's caught the eyes of a lot of neutrals and or a lot of fans of Super League. Clubs. Is that because Bradford's down there? Maybe I don't think it is mm. because a lot. It, well, it just shows what a profile and marketing can do because a lot of people are getting behind York this year. A lot of people got, got behind Workington on the weekend. Social media, marketing. Ma- if you market the game right, the fans are, the fans will come. Well, they had 1,600 there at Workington, which, you know, you're looking at equivalent crowds for performances against Whitehaven. You know, so that's almost like a local derby crowd. And yeah. There was probably, what, three, four... 450 York fans there and it's a long way to travel I mean I was balking at the fact that it was two and a half hours home for me you had another hour hour and a half on top going to Hull uh, to going to going to York you had even more if you going to Hull I could just slipped in there <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah um, I wanted just to go through some very briefly some weekend stories for you uh, Craig Hall let's start with him all Kingston Rovers he's now scored Hat trick on on the weekend. Seven tries in four games. Great performance. Greg Eden hat trick for Castleford. Ryan Hampshire another eighteen points for Wakefield. We've already talked about him, but Bryson Goodwin five tries in a game. Daryl Olfert a hat trick for Salford. Gareth O'Brien eighteen points for Toronto in their win against London Broncos. Mark Carella. Brilliant. Best player I've seen this season, I think, Mark Carella. 22 points for him against Widnes. Joe Brown, a hat-trick against Swinton. And Johnny Campbell, who recently agreed a new contract with Batley, also grabbing a hat-trick at the weekend. I just want a quick word about Joe Brown, because I saw the highlights that Swinton put on. I've seen him a couple of times live. I know he's a guy that you'll have seen quite a bit of coming through the ranks at Wigan. Um, He's like the next Joe Burgess, isn't he? He is, yeah, I was, I was just about to say it. He reminds me exactly the way he plays of, of Joe Burgess. He's tall, but he's quick. He gets in the air. He, he's good in the air. Strong in D. And uh, he's, he's got a lot of pace to burn. I, 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 I think he's still eligible to play in the under-19s. I think he's only 19. I think he's in his, his final year of the under-19s. Originally, he came from Bradford. Oh, did he? Bradford Bulls. He came from Bradford, Bradford Bulls so about two years ago. When they had their yeah. last last issue. Mm, I think I think he left around about the same time as, as what when Jake Truman left. Right, Bradford, OK. Um, but he's been, he's been magnificent. For, so is he a Yorkshire lad? Then? Yeah, yeah, he's oh, a okay. Yorkshire lad, and uh, he's just been un- unbelievable for for Wigan under 19s. He's excelled. He can play uh, at fullback as well, so he's he's good cover out on the wing and at fullback. I think we will be seeing him in Super League in, in the near future. Well, that was going to be my next question because obviously Liam Marshall went down that route and ended up a Super League regular until sadly his injury a few weeks ago. Um, do you think he's set for a long Super League career then, Joe Brown? I think he is, and I think I, I don't. I don't. I don't like putting too much pressure on players, but I think 
I've watched it's not the I've next watched, Billy Slater, I've, is it? I've, We're not going to go that far, are we? I've, I've watched a lot of under 19 rugby yeah, over, yeah. over the last four or five years, and I think him as a winger, I don't think I've seen many better. If I'm honest, I think the the last winger I did see with a lot of that much potential was was um, Tom Davis, who's who's now a solid Wigan first teamer, and, and Lee Marshall as well. So I think Joe Brown, if it, if he can maybe put on a little bit of size, you know, like Joe Burgess has, I think he can be a, a real, really good player for for Super League, not just for Wigan, but for potentially England in I think in potentially he's a real ago. exciting player because when he scored that trick and he laid a try in as well for I think it was George Tyson who he's always there or thereabouts on a try for Swinton anyway to be fair this season um, right uh, moving on I want to look at some of the re-signings so again I'll just flick through them just stop me if you want to sort of have a quick word so last week we saw the announcements of Eddie Batty and Kieran Dixon at London Broncos big signings for the Broncos Kieran Dixon very exciting player to watch uh, he's cut some errors out of his game this year still has a, a couple of couple of errors in him but I think he's improving all the time and He's, a, he's been a real asset for, for London since since he's gone back there, Eddie Bassi, Bassi, one of the best forwards in the Championship for, for the last couple of years, and he's a he's a bulldozing kind of forward, isn't he? He's a, a There's a little bit of slight to his game as well, though, because he can like pass it, he can move it. I think he's a bit more skillful than just a bashing barge mm. man, although you can use him in, mm. that, in that fashion. Um, he's always been one of those guys that I've always rated, and uh, you know, as a Leaf fan, I would love to have seen him in a Lee pack at some point. But it looks like London's got first dibs on him for now. It was it was great for London in in the uh, qualifiers win at Witness as well a few weeks ago. Jamie Dallymore has just penned a new two year deal at Barrow. Now I've seen Jamie a couple of times this season. Real class halfback at that level. Um, again, a player that came to the professional ranks perhaps a bit late and later than expected. But he's certainly making up for lost time now. Um, also, this isn't a signing, but I think it's a crucial one. Ian Hardman on the move from Featherstone. Well, that's Ten another years one. He spent there. Yeah, it's a, it's another one, isn't it? He's he's been a a real solid player for for Fev over the over the years. I remember going when I was working at Lee. I, I don't know if you came with us or not, Dave. And he had a really solid game a couple of years ago, and I thought that that was the first time I fully. Just admired his performance because he was solid for Fev. He scored a couple of tries, kicked a couple of goals as well, and he was the difference in, in Fev beating Lee that day a couple of years ago. Um, Doncaster have announced a whole heap of re signings Brad England, Kieran Cross, Richard Owen, a former Super League player, of course, with was it Castleford and Whitefield? Mm. Uh, Geordie Hedges, Sam Doherty, and Connor Scott all agree in new deals there at Doncaster. Hunslet have signed up their skipper Dwayne Schraffer to a new deal, who Again, I think he's just a he's real. He's been great top since player. he's gone back there, hasn't he? Oh, he's been excellent. He was really good. I always thought at Sheffield as well when he mm. was there for a long while. Uh, and Keithley, earlier this season, James Feather or Buster, as he's known, uh, came out of retirement to answer an SOS. He's not put the boots away. He's just signed a new contract. Thirty-four years of age. Go on, Buster. <laughs> Keithley legend. Keithley legend. I'm sure that Josh up at Keithley will like me saying that. But uh, again, he's re one of these real unsung heroes that you find at clubs. Um, also, other players to have agreed new deals at Keithley: Alfie Seeley, Harvey Hallis, and Aaron Levy. Harvey Hallis was in the, the Leeds Academy, I think, a couple of year, a couple of years back, and. I, I, I don't think he was offered a deal after his time in the under-19. Did he look but a good player? Yeah, he did. He did, and it's, it's a shame because, well, they don't have a reserve grade, did they, Dave? Uh, no, no. So, so there you go, you got it in again, well played. Yeah, he had to, he had to leave, didn't he? <laughs> yes, yes. At 19, when... You, uh, go on, go on. Uh, Drew, do you want to take us through the fixtures this forthcoming weekend? Yeah, I will do. On Thursday... In a televised game, it's Wigan against Wakefield. Predictions for that one, Dave? Wigan by 12. Mm, interesting. Friday, it's Hull hosting Castleford. Uh, Castleford by 24. Only 24? There'll be a, there's a reaction. There's a <laughs> sorry, reaction sorry, 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 old fans. I'm sorry. Don't. I'm sorry. I just, 
that was a waste. Lee Radford will never give you another interview if you carry on. No, I actually, I actually feel feel sorry for Lee Radford because it's not, it's not his, his doing it no, at Hull no, at the minute. No, I, I agree. Uh, Warrington, Huddersfield Giants, and if Huddersfield beat Wakefield last week, this would have been a really exciting game. Do you think, as a result, then Warrington's going to run away with this a little bit? Probably because I think Huddersfield's hopes would have would have all but gone now of, of making the the top four. Oh, in the Championship, Shields, Sheffield, Hosting, Featherstone. Um, that has the potential to be quite a good game. I well, think. well, if, if Featherstone still only have a shortage of players, they might be tied from from the league game, aren't they? And, and the short on subs, I'm going Featherstone though by by a drop goal. I'll go Featherstone by eight. Saturday sees Catalans host St Helens in Perpignan. You know what? I reckon Catalans will get over the Randover. I reckon they're going to give St Helens a good game. They know how to beat them, Dave. Uh, I'm going Cats by six. Ooh, and that's very shaky for Saints then. Going on to the next one, Salford Red Devils hosting the Toronto Wolfpack at the age This of could be a stormer. This could be an absolute cracker. You know what though? I reckon that at um, home Salford. Salford yeah, been in good I fancy. Form. I fancy Salford at home. I think it will be close, but I'm thinking Salford in the end by eight. Mm, this, I think, I think it might kick off in this game as well. You reckon? I think there'll be a little bit of beef. Bit of, bit of fisticuffs. League One action on Saturday: London Scholars v Hemel Stags. Oh, that's a win for Scholars. Expansion, eh? Say twenty-four points at least. Newcastle Thunder v Workington Town. Wow, that's going to be a cracker as well. That, to be honest, I'm, um, I'm a little bit of a fan of Newcastle. I'm not going to lie. I don't know why. I, don't, I just think they're doing they, things they, right as a yeah, club. Yeah, they are because they've got a lot of junior clubs now playing the game. Cromlington Rockets always seem to be be the big club who who bring through a lot of players. There's been players in the England youth setups from Thunder this year, which is testament to to the club and the North East game. And uh, I've, I've heard the name Lewis Young, who, who's meant to be a really good up-and-coming player, so it's going to be interesting to see how he develops. Talking to some of the guys in working in the Workington press box, they reckon as well that because Newcastle Thunder have a development squad coming through at the academy, they're actually targeting players from that area mm. to go over and, and play for Newcastle. So the, the, they've got wings, haven't mm. they? And they're sort of like trying to spread them. It's great to see. And uh, Sunday... I'm going to go for a Workington win there, though. Yeah, we're by to. ten. Sunday, Hawkeye v Halifax. Can oh. Halifax get the first first points on the board? No, I don't see it. I don't no, see I don't it. Hull Kingston Rovers by twenty four. Yeah, Hull Kingston Rovers as well for me. London Broncos in the capital against Toulouse Olympic. That's a, that's going to be brilliant. If there was a game that I want to watch this weekend, that's the one because both of those sides can attack. And it's not on teller. <sighs> So you can get your tickets. <laughs> Witness Vikings against the Leeds Rhinos at the Holton Stadium. I'm glad I'm not going to this one because neither side looks like they want to win at the moment. I don't think Widnes can win. A, a, a lot, of, a lot of people will be expecting Leeds to, to, to win this game, but I also won't be surprised if Widnes didn't uh, won either because Leeds are not very good at all. That'd throw the that throw the cat amongst the pigeons for Leeds because they they wouldn't have been expecting to uh, to what lose two games in this uh, in this eight competition that they're in. And that'll make it really interesting in terms of the table as well. If if Leeds lost to Widnes, onto the Championship Shield on Sunday, Batley Bulldogs against the Rochdale Hornets. Batley win there. Dewsbury Rams v Barrow Raiders. Ooh. That's actually quite. A, a could be quite a good game. Um, depends how Barrow travel on the day, but I would still fancy Dewsbury giving the home Rams. advantage. I think the Rams. Lee Centurions v Swinton Lions. It I depends asked. which Lee turns up. I saw uh, Mickey. I'm having a little bit of a, a joke and a, and a laugh with uh, Paul Wood on Twitter. Two of them big mates from the time at Warrington. Also uh, had business together for a number of years as well. Mm. Um, League One action on Sunday: Coventry Bows against North Wales Crusaders. Can only see a North Wales win there, unfortunately. But Coventry to put a big effort in. Keithley Cougars v Doncaster. That could be a really good game as well. I reckon Donny will just pick up the points. <sighs> Oh, probably the tightest game of the Rugby League weekend. What's this, Whitehaven and Hunslet? No, West Wales Raiders v Bradford Bulls. I think this is the free hit for Bradford Bulls, isn't it? So if you look at the point difference at the moment, York are top 
with 750 points difference. Bradford have a point difference of plus 758. They're going to get at least 70 points there, I think, Bradford. I think maybe 100 points for Bradford. Whitehaven, Hunslet, that'll be a very tough game. Could be. Yeah, as all the old hallmarks. traditional clubs. Yeah, it has all the hallmarks of a bit of a League One classic, that, doesn't it? So we'll wait and see what happens. I'm going home advantage, though. And finally, a War of the Roses clash in League One. The York City Knights against Oldham. Got to stick with me Lancashire roots, although I really love the work that York City Knights are doing. And I know that uh, Gav Wilson and um, another guy of his were, were really, really helpful to, to me ahead of the game uh, last week. So, although I've got a soft spot for York, and I always have done, I can't go against the Red Rose. Can't go against the Red Rose. Come on, Oldham. I don't want to go against the Red Rose, but I think the White Rose will come out on top there with this one. You, see, you, I go honestly in, think you know what you're doing there? You're going Pink Rose for the week. Oh. <laughs> but, yeah, I, think, I, I just love watching York at times. and I, I wish there was more League One games. I don't know we get this debate all the time. I, I just wish there was... Rugby league across the weekend on telly. Well, maybe we'll but get. saying that, maybe we'll get this because of the streaming. It, that's it is. On board, no, it's all. It's live streaming. That this one game. is. That one is live. And streaming. this is, and it's brilliant to see. So I'm going to watch it on. So Sunday. that's your hour league app, by the way. So on, get get that. Remember to order. sign up. Remember to sign up and rem remember the competition as well behind the competition. us. Competition. Um, get it shared. The post. Right. And you can finally, the chance of winning the scratch map. Sorry, again, no, sorry, Dave. It's over sorry, you, Dave. Pop. Um, Just get another plug in for it. Get another plug in. Just get another. Sorry, plug. I interrupted it. Sorry, get another plug in. <laughs> <laughs> Just get it sure. Get it sure. We'll we'll pick a winner ahead of next week's show. Um, you said that you wanted to talk about a couple of guys that are retiring. We've, we've recently seen the news that Ryan Inchcliffe is uh, packing up the boots at the end of the season. It's been a good signing for Huddersfield, hasn't he, over the last couple of years? Yeah, I, w I would have expected him to sign a new deal. If I'm honest, Dave, I think. He's been an unsung hero at the Giants over the last few years, but the, the fans really like him, from from what I understand. I think he's a, he's a fan favourite there. He's a leader as well, isn't he, on, on the field, because he's got so much experience, can play at nine, play at loose forward. I think it's a bit of a shame. I, d I, d I don't know if, if Huddersfield have spoken to him, they've offered him a deal, and it's and it's Ryan's decision to, to hang up his boots, or if it's, uh, if it's vice versa, and Huddersfield haven't offered him anything, but... I think it's a, a shame because he's he's been great in, in Super League over the last couple of years. It's a real hard hitting tackler. Um, who else have you heard that's packing his boots up? Catalan Dragon duo Vincent Dupont, who obviously played in in the 2007 Challenge Cup final defeat. One of the the two current players of the Dragon squad, alongside Remy Casti. He's not played much this year. Uh, he's been he's been overshadowed by by the likes of Braden, William, Ian Thornley. David Mead, so it, it won't t change too much in terms of the, the current setup at Catalans, but I think he's, he's he's been a good servant to the club, played all the time while they were in Super League, got a, a lot of appearances under his belt for France, so he's a, he's a good servant to the game. Louis Anderson, also at Catalans, so ex-New Zealand, New Zealand international, I think he's got about 18 caps under his belt for the Kiwis in, in the space of like three seasons. Uh, been a great player, hasn't he, in Super League. I, I remember him and his brother, uh, Vinny, for, for Warrington. I, I loved him at Warrington. I was growing up and I, I wasn't even a Warrington fan growing up, but I remember seeing him carry the ball with one hand and I was like, how, how did he, how did he how's carry, he how's he carry <laughs> the ball with one hand? I was amazed. And uh, is there any, bit, any more, any more uh, retirements? I can't think of any that's been I announced over I this last think. week or so. But, uh, yeah, thanks for those, Drew. Uh, been an absolute pleasure being in your company, mate. Just the one so final should thing. It, should it just be me and you in future, Dave, and just leave James in, in, off, in other office? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Do you reckon? Get in touch. Do you prefer James being here, or do you prefer James out of, out of the Love Rugby League weekly? thing is, though, we can always then have a go at witness, can't we? <laughs> come on, James, come back in. Yeah, come in, come in, pal. Absolute pleasure being alongside you today, Drew. Uh, really enjoyed it. One last thing from me is the fact that over this next few weeks, we've got the UK Armed Forces into service fixtures. So we've got uh, Aldershot Rugby Stadium on the 7th of September, the Army versus the Navy. On the 14th of September at Featherstone Rovers, the RAF take on the Army. And on the 21st of September at Burnaby Road in Portsmouth, it's the Navy against the RAF. Now, all of those uh, fixtures 
all taking place over this next few weeks. I'm going to try and keep an eye and keep everybody up to date with how that is progressing. Uh, but the good thing about this, and you're like this, we've got ladies teams competing, an academy team competing, and a senior team competing. So it's th- brilliant th- to see. Why, why in Super League? Why have they got it right, and yet some Super League clubs don't? Let's leave it there. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll be back again next week.